Good morning, guys. Okay, good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. Um, we did just do a video. You guys can check it out, the one right before this. I was encouraging you guys. We were praying, and we read from Matthew chapter 5. So um, make sure that you check out that video if you haven't. What we're going to do today, I'm not going to be on long for Bible study um, this morning. Um, but we are going to continue reading Job chapter 15. We're going to read Job 16, and we're going to read Job 17. And we'll, we'll pick up Job chapter 18, Lord's will, in the next Bible study video. But we're continuing on from the video that we just did. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that the Bible study is already blessed. We thank you that your people are fired up and encouraged, Father God, and have more joy and strength and peace and hope in you and feel your presence on a deeper level, God. And again, God, we thank you that this Bible study is already blessed and covered under the blood of Jesus. God, thank you for blessing and touching us. And thank you, God, that the person that is tuning into this Bible study is going deeper on our faith walk and spiritual journey with you, getting deeper into your word. And we receive something from this Bible study and this, this channel, God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So I'm just going to pick up from Job 15, verse 12. Like I said, um, if you miss anything, guys, feel free to go back. Everything is up on the replay. Um, I just want to continue um, moving forward. So Job 15 is Eliphaz speaking. We're going to, like I said, 12, continuing on. So why has your heart carried you away and why do your eyes flash so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? What is man that he could be pure or one born of woman that he could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less men who is vile and corrupt, who drinks up evil like water. And it may look a little bit dark, guys. I'm still in the car. Um, I'm going to head out after this, but I'll be doing my best, guys, to do Bible study. If I have to do it in the room, if I have to do it at the park, if I have to do it in the car. Guys, I get it how I have to get it and do it how God need me to do it. There's no excuses. There's no excuses, and I know that's going to give for me a good reward, not just for me, but for you guys, too, because y'all are tuning in into the channel and the videos being encouraged, and you going deeper in your faith walk as well, so you got a reward as well. So, so okay, so um, 15, of God places no trust in his holy ones, of even the heavens are not pure in his eyes, how much less man who is vile and corrupt, who drinks up evil like water. Listen to me and I will explain to you. Let me tell you what I have seen, what wise men have declared, how did nothing received from their fathers, to whom alone the land was given, when no alien passed among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment, the ruthless, and you can still see their speech and their actions and attitude toward Job. The ruthless through all the years stored up for him, terrifying sounds fill his ears when all seems well, Mara does attack him. It's just a shame how they were talking to him, but God is really going to to bless Job. So, and he's going to bless him with more than what he had before. So he despairs of escaping the darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wonders about food for vultures or looking about for food in the footnotes. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. They overwhelm him like a king poised to attack because he shakes his fist at God and vaunts himself against the Almighty defiantly charging against him with a thick strong shield though his face is covered with fat and his waist bulges with flesh he will inhabit ruined towns and houses where no one lives houses crumbling to rubble he will no longer be rich and his wealth will not endure nor will his possession spread over the land he will not escape the darkness a flame will wither his shoes and the breath of god's mouth will carry him away let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless for he will get nothing in return before his time he will be paid in full and his branches will not flourish he will be like a van vine i'm sorry vine script of his unripe grapes like an olive tree shedding its blossoms for the company of the godless will be barren and the fire will consume i'm sorry fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes they conceive trouble they go another plan they conceive trouble and give birth to evil their womb fashions deceit so let me know what you guys got out of Job 15 from Eliphaz. In fact, let me know what you're getting out of um, our September Bible study series. This is either day eight or nine. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna put it in. An, um, I'm gonna put it when I title the video which one it is. But I feel like we're doing great with Bible study. 
We're going to read chapter 16 and 17 today. Job has about 42 chapters, and I feel like for these last, if we're either on day 8 or 9, we're doing good with having read that many chapters. So I'm proud of you guys for tuning in and, you know, these monthly Bible studies and just, just being encouraged and blessed through this channel and the videos and everything we're doing, you know, behind the scenes with it. I'm proud of you. God is proud of you. And just know you're going to be rewarded for that. You know, there's a reward. There's a spiritual, physical reward. There's a reward on that. So let's get into Job 16. Job 16 is Job speaking, and I believe 17 is Job. And then when we pick up the next Job Bible study, we're going to be talking about Lord's will, build that. Excuse me, some other stuff. So Job is replying back to Eliphaz. So he said, then Job replied, I have heard many things like these miserable comforters are you all so he didn't call them worthless physicians now he's calling them miserable comforters and they are so he has every right to say this so it says will your long-winded speeches never end what ails you that you keep on arguing i also could speak like you if you were in my place look how joe changed it around he like come off because if the table was turned was turned and the shoe was on the other foot i could speak just like you you know so, and then you got to remember, Job was prosperous. He was a rich, wealthy man. He was a righteous man. So, you know, a lot of times when people are on a certain caliber or wavelength or scale, they're going to hang out with certain people on those same scales. Because Job even said to them, I haven't asked you, you know, to offer up anything. I've asked nothing from your wealth. So these tell me that these friends have some wealth too, or they have some type of background. Like, Job wasn't rich with some poor friends. He probably blessed the poor and then looked down on the poor, you know. But if, if you, so I'm just for example, I'm just saying this is what I think. If you're a doctor, you may hang around other people in different professions. There's no prejudices against that. But if you're a doctor and you're in a certain area of your life, I think like a good eight or nine out of ten, your circle is going to be other doctors. That's like a thief. If you're a thief, your circle is going to be being a thief. And I'm not condoning that. I'm just trying to give you guys practical examples. Try to do spiritual and practical. If you are a mom, you may have some single friends. Like if you're a single mom or you're married. So if you're married, you may have some single friends. But your, your primary people may probably be married people. You understand what I'm saying? If you're a person that likes to ride bikes or go out in nature or surf, you're probably going to be around people that like to serve. You see what I'm saying? The company you keep says a lot about you. Like what's inside of you is going to connect with other people. You know, you want to be connected to who God have you connected with. So what I'm basically saying in so many words is it's just like cars. Like if you see a lot for a luxury car. So so a Kia is a good car. Toyota, um, Mercedes, Ferrari. There's different type of brands of cars. Honda, there's different type of cars. Um, Fords, you know, GMC, there's different ones. But according to each lot, it's going to be those specific cars. It's going to be rare that you see um, a Mercedes Benz um, parking lot or the dealership, a Kia park there. They don't match. They're both good in their own right, but those cars are going to keep a certain company of those cars because that's a certain brand. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like that's why Job is saying, I also could speak like you if you were in my place. You understand what I mean? So let's just keep going with that. So you guys let me know what you got out of that. So um, I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you, but my mouth would encourage you. See, this goes to show... The character and integrity of Job versus these friends, so-called friends. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. And that's the thing. Like, even with me, like, when you are an encourager and that's one of your gifts that God has blessed you with, you got to encourage no matter what. You got to encourage others. God gave you the gift to encourage others, his people, even those that's not his people that will, but will be his people. And he gave you the gift to encourage yourself in the Lord. But Job is saying, even though, basically, he's saying, like, even though you guys are basically tearing me down and not encouraging me. Because when we read prior, it says that Job encouraged people and he helped them. He strengthened the feeble people. He really helped people. Job said, even though y'all doing all this to me, I, I would still encourage you. I would encourage you. I wouldn't do you how you doing me. And that's how you know you're going to get your reward. Like, when you could do people how they do you. And you don't, and you still praying for them, and you still being who God called you to be, the men and women God called you, called you, that God called you to be. 
Oh, there's a reward in it. So let's finish up, guys. It's still hot. I don't know how. So yet if I yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. Surely, oh God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. I'm gonna try to close in a few minutes, guys. You have bound me, and it has become a witness. My gauntness rises up and testifies against me. God assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. My opponent fastens on me his piercing eyes. Men open their mouths to jeer at me. They strike my cheek in scorn and unite together against me. God has turned me over to evil men and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked. All was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. And that's a word for someone in the midst of you're going through. It will be well. You got to speak your world. You got to speak your reality. You got to speak the word of God. And you're going to watch your situation and circumstance bow down to God. God is not going to bow down to time in your situation and circumstance. Your situation and circumstance is going to have to bow down to God. Like we talked about the just shall live by faith. So he sees me by the neck and crush me. And sometimes that's easier said than done. But when we live in for God, we got to live by his word. We got to live by his will and we got to live by his way. All right. So he has, he has made me his target. His archers surround me without pity. He pierces my kidneys and spills my gall on the ground. So he's really going through again and again. He bursts upon me and we knew that, but I'm just, you know, emphasizing that he's really going through. So again and again, he bursts upon me. He rushes at me like a warrior. I have sewed or sewed sackcloth over my skin and buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Come on, has anyone ever been there? My face is red with weeping. Deep shadows ring my eyes. And if you're in this state, what is encouraging you for your Job 42? If you've been through this, what has what, what encouraged you? Or who encouraged you to get through that time and season? Let, let us know in the comments. So you, Maybe that testimony can encourage someone else. So my face is red with weeping. Deep shadows ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. God is going to reward that. So, O oh, earth, do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. Come on, decree and declare it out your mouth right now, guys. You, my brother or sister, listen to this. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. Even decree that 17, Job 16, 17. Yet my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. So let's do 20 through 22. My intercessor is my friend or my friend that in the bottom. My intercessor is my friend as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he pleads with God as a man pleads for his friend. Only a few years will pass before I go on the journey of no return. Give me one second, guys. We're going to jump into 17. Let me just get some more of the drink. There go another one. I receive all your blessings you have for me, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. 17 has about 16 verses. It says, this is Job still speaking. My spirit is broken. My days are cut short. The grave awaits me. Surely markers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. Give me, O oh God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? You have closed their minds to understanding. Therefore, you will not let them triumph. If a man denounces his friends for reward the eyes of his children will fail god has made me a byword to everyone the man in whose face people spit my eyes have grown dim with grief my whole frame is but a shadow and if the book of job is encouraging you i encourage you to read the book of psalms in your private time just go as god leads you to the psalms and you know that will encourage you as well so um my eyes have grown dim with grief my whole frame is but a shadow Upright men are appalled at this. The innocent are aroused against the ungodly. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways, and those with clean hands will grow stronger. Speak that over yourself. Because you're righteous, you're going to hold to your ways. And because you have clean hands, you're going to grow stronger. Speak that Nehemiah 18. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Right? Even that Isaiah, um, I think it's 40 verse 31 or somewhere in that area. You're going to be like the eagle and mount up you know, with more strength. But come on, all of you, try again. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed. My plans are shattered, and so are the desires of my heart. These men turn night into day. In the face of darkness, they say light is near. If the only home I hope for is the grave or in the Hebrew shield on the footnotes. If I spread out my bed in darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, into the worm, my mother or my sister, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope? 
for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? And that Sheol as well. Will we descend together into the dust? Guys, we're going to close with Bible study. Thanks for joining. I love you guys. God bless and have a beautiful, blessed day.